Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com, and today we're taking a closer look at the hardware on the Verizon Motorola Droid 3. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. After spending a couple of days with the Droid 3, I have to say this is actually a very reasonable device. I don't know that it's uh, a uh, must-have or a uh, powerhouse uh, sort of device. There's a couple little items we'll go over in this hardware review that I found to be um, kind of concerning. But really, let's just go right to the, the most important thing, the battery life on this. Uh, today, uh, I ran it uh, completely by itself. Um, running all of my communications through it, all my email, that sort of thing. And uh, if we take a look here under the battery and, battery and data manager, the 20% right now, I've been running for 13 hours. Uh, we're just now getting uh, at 1040 at night, the 15% uh, or less battery uh, life remaining. And I've got the battery, um, right now the dis display is on full brightness, uh, specifically for this review. But as you can see here, normally the display, especially on my Epic 4G, is right up at the top for the, the percentage usage, and it's cell standby that's the, the number one item there. Uh, so really, battery life has been outstanding. Uh, I'm going to do a little few more phone calls, and I'll update the review with uh, any more information there as we get it. As for the keyboard itself, uh, I found it it's nice and backlit. It's, it, it's a little swishy. I mean, I'm going to move the the device up to the next to the microphone so you can hear this. So that's what you get when you are listening to typing on this device. A lot of swishy, almost like you're wearing corduroy pants while uh, typing. It's not too terribly annoying unless you have problems with those sort of noises. The other thing I found with this keyboard, while it's uh, pretty easy to type on, I'm finding that I'm hitting the V button more than the C button, probably because I'm used to the Epic uh, 4G. Uh, and this particular uh, the tail over here actually causes my hand to be shifted over slightly, so it's a little different to type when things aren't lined up exactly where I want them. I keep wanting to push my hand over further to line my fingers up with the keyboard a little bit better. Since my Epic 4G does have uh, a top row uh, number keys, that's not it hasn't been too big of an uh, issue between myself, but compared to the other Droid devices, this is a very handy keyboard and actually a pleasure to use, uh, considering. Call volume and call, uh, call reception on this particular device has been uh, received very well by the people who have been uh, listening on the other end. I haven't had any complaints uh, and personally I haven't had any drop calls at all. Not surprising with a Verizon phone, they're usually very solid. Uh, the one thing I did find with the keyboard is that on this particular device, and I did go and check on another device at the Verizon store, uh, it seems to stick right there. It's a little harder to force there, and if if you've got a uh, web page up uh, and you are trying to push this up any angle other than uh, very the tips of your thumbs, you're going to press keys like this. If you're used to being able to slide this open, there's no spring load mechanism for this. On the store demo unit, uh, it was very, very smooth all the way through. Uh, no uh, complications or problems on that device. So it may just be this review unit. The other thing I found is that while it locks very nicely up here, so there's if I put a little pressure here, it doesn't uh, collapse automatically. Um, and when I put this in my pocket, I often find the device when I pull it out is a bit like this slightly askew, and I've also found that at this uh, depth right about here, the screen does wiggle a little bit. Now this is normal for a slider phone in my opinion. Well, the Epic 4G does this wiggle as well, the, the Oreo effect as, as it's called. Uh, so I just wish there was a little bit more locking mechanism down on this end. Battery cover, uh, we talked about before, is just extremely difficult to get loose, but there really hasn't been a reason to pull the battery. Uh, other reviewers have complained that they've uh, had to reboot the device. I haven't had that, anything like that happen with this particular uh, review unit. 
So that's that's a positive. Power button has been uh, pretty easy to use. It's a little different spot that I'm used to with the Epic 4G, but it hasn't caused me any problems. The volume rockers and the volume on uh, both the media and uh, calls have been outstanding. Headphone jack on the top uh, has also been uh, caused no problems. Uh, the headphone jack their headphone plugged in very easily. No problems with Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, we'll get more into Bluetooth and some of the voice commands that it has when we get there. Charging on this device has been uh, very fast, actually, compared to the last review I did with the LG Revolution. It, this device charges up very nicely, uh, which I appreciate uh, greatly, especially when you're, you're on the road uh, and need to get your device back up to full charge. A couple of other items of note uh, with the Droid 3. There is no gyroscope on this device, and uh, it's a bit of a surprise considering there's a lot of games that can use that functionality. There is an accelerometer uh, up here with your sensors. You've got the light sensor. You've got a multicolored LED, which you can see blinking here. It does change color according to what the alert is, but there's no way, at least in the software that I've been able to find yet, to change that manually. Uh, we talked about the VGA uh, camera, uh, and we'll go into that a little more in depth when we talk about cameras in the full review. And then on the back, we've got an 8 megapixel uh, camera. Interesting about this 8 megapixel camera is that in order to be able to use the 8 megapixels, you actually have to choose the square framing rather than the wide frame. Uh, in wide framing mode, it's actually 6 megapixels, so you have to set that yourself in the software. But we'll go over that more. Uh, later in the software review. Weight-wise, this device is actually heavier than the uh, Epic 4G uh, by about 30 grams, uh, which in the hand it doesn't feel too terribly different. In the pocket it doesn't feel too terribly different. So it's not, while it's not that much of a, a deal, and while it is thinner than the Epic 4G, it is heavier uh, by and large. It is also longer uh, than the Epic 4G by just a smidge due to the tail down here. Side by side, really, they're about the same uh, depth. Let's take a quick look at the uh, screen differences here between these uh, two devices, the Epic 4G and the uh, Droid 3. The colors on the Epic 4G are much more brilliant and accurate. The reds here are, are truly red and may be hard to see in this video, but in the Droid 3 screen, they are uh, noticeably purple in hue, and the greens uh, in the background are um, not uh, green at all. They're, they're, uh, they're actually very muted compared to the original photo that I took. So uh, even the blacks you can see here, they're kind of a, a gray. It may be a little bit difficult to tell in this picture, but in the Droid 3, the blacks are not really black. They're kind of a light gray. Motorola does a really good job of kind of hiding this fact in the main menu um, and a lot of the menu options by creating kind of this hashed pattern effect in the background. Now, that's not to be confused with the QHD um, pixel uh, the pin tile, sorry, pin tile display that this device has. And if you're wondering what pin tile's display does, it, it's still a little difficult to see in this particular view. But if you look um, in the high def version of this image here, in the text, and also if we look up here in the clock section, and there's a lot of other images online uh, that can demonstrate this uh, pixelation that happens there. There's kind of, you can see the detail, the pixel edges, which when you're looking at a, a screen full of text makes it extremely difficult to uh, focus on. It It's really hard to actually look at the text at all if you're scrolling very quickly compared to a Super AMOLED screen. Again, that said, we're probably seeing a lot of the battery life savings in this device because of that pin tile display. Well, it's difficult to see here. The back keys are, are the uh, home row buttons, uh, the buttons in Android. Uh, the menu, home, back, and search are backlit. It's just that the sensor to make them backlit 
is really super sensitive. It has to be almost uh, pitch black for them to light up. Same thing with the keyboard backlighting. Going into the another item that, that that's important to note on this device is the haptic feedback, which is extremely strong. It almost shakes the device every time it comes on, when it's when you use the keyboard or when you get a notification or when it just decides to vibrate when you slide across the screen. It's super, super intense. There doesn't seem to be a way to turn that uh, down in any way, shape, or form. It just shakes the device almost like the, the uh, it's akin to a gaming pad losing its functionality with a vibration function. It shakes audibly and almost wobbles the device. It's so strong. That wraps up the hardware review of the Motorola Droid 3 from Verizon. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll get back to them as soon as possible. Try to answer those for you. Otherwise, thanks for watching.